All right, let's just jump right into it. We are tackling one of the most deceptively simple, yet completely cursed questions in the entire tech world. How often should you actually update your stuff? It sounds like you're just asking for a date on a calendar, right? But what you're really doing is opening a Pandora's box of opinions, deeply held philosophies, and a whole lot of sysadmin trauma. And this, this is the question that summons the storm. How often should you update Proxmox? You ask this online and you are not getting a simple answer. Nope, you're gonna unleash a hurricane of conflicting advice from every corner of the internet. There is no single right answer and that is exactly what makes this whole topic so fascinating and let's be honest, so incredibly frustrating. And this quote just, it hits the nail on the head, doesn't it? Asking about an update schedule, it's not really a technical question, it's a psychological one. You're not just asking about software, you're uncovering people's core beliefs about risk, about stability, and about the ghosts of updates past that are still haunting their servers. So yeah, welcome to the discourse. Over on one side, you have the folks who update their systems every single day, like it's as routine as brushing your teeth. And on the other, you've got the sysadmins who will not touch a production server unless there's a full moon, a five alarm critical vulnerability, and they've had at least two strong cups of coffee. It is pure, unadulterated, glorious chaos. So to make any sense of this chaos, we've got to understand the people behind the keyboards. This is less about the technology and it's way more about the philosophy. So let's meet the different patch personalities. These are the sysadmin archetypes you will find arguing in every single forum thread about this. So first up, you've got the daily devotee. They treat their servers like a garden that needs constant weeding and tending. Then there's the weekly ritualist, who kind of walks the middle path. You know, automate the easy security stuff, but manually check out the bigger changes. You've got the monthly minimalist, calm, sensible, a big fan of testing on a spare machine first. Then, oh yeah, you know this one, the if-it-ain't-broke hermit. They run their system like a sealed submarine, silent, deep, and hoping nothing ever springs a leak. And finally, the enterprise scheduler, who treats updates like a full-blown military operation with staged rollouts and canary deployments. Be honest, which one are you? Okay, so talking about how often to run the update command is one thing, but the real friction, the thing that complicates everything, isn't the update itself. It is the dreaded, the feared, the reboot that has to happen afterwards. This is where the real arguments start. And this is the mantra, isn't it? It's the little voice in your head every time you click, remind me later. You run the updates, but you put off the reboot. You're basically just kicking the can down the road, leaving a little ticking time bomb for future you to deal with. It's so tempting, but man, it almost always ends with a very stressful, very late night of troubleshooting. And look, this is a dangerous game because these aren't just hypotheticals. These are real world horror stories. That kernel update from a month ago, it suddenly causes ZFS errors after a power cycle. You plug in a simple USB drive and nothing crickets, because the running kernel and the on-disk modules are totally out of sync. Or, my personal nightmare, a subtle update changes the network interface names and your entire server just drops off the network. See, delaying a reboot doesn't avoid risk, it just marinades it. So let's try to reframe this whole conversation. This isn't really a philosophical debate, it's not dogma. It's actually a very practical discussion about managing risk. Everybody is trying to stop something bad from happening. They just fundamentally disagree on what the biggest threat actually is. And this is the absolute key to understanding everything. The update ASAP crowd and the if it ain't broke hermits, they're not just being stubborn. They are, as the source brilliantly put it, risk models wearing hoodies. The first group optimizes for security. To them, an unpatched system is an active ticking threat. They're willing to accept the small, frequent risk that a patch might break something. The second group optimizes for stability. They see change itself as the primary enemy, and they're willing to accept the large but hopefully infrequent risk of a major security breach. So which risk model is right for you? Well, it all comes down to one simple concept, your blast radius. What is actually at stake if something goes wrong? Are we talking about your personal home lab running a Plex server where an outage is just an annoyance? Or are we talking about a critical enterprise cluster where every minute of downtime costs thousands of dollars? The answer to that question defines your entire update strategy. Okay, we have waded through the chaos. We've talked philosophy. Now let's get practical. Let's move from theory to a clear, actionable plan that cuts through all that noise and helps you find a rhythm that actually works for your specific blast radius. All right, here's how we build a solid process. Number one, separate your security patches from your feature updates, just to automate the critical stuff. Number two, get into a weekly rhythm. 
At the very least, run a dry run once a week just to see what's waiting for you. Three, and this is totally non-negotiable for anything important, stage everything. Always test on a non-critical system first. Four, treat reboots like planned events, not some annoying afterthought. Kernel update, schedule the reboot. Don't let them stack up. Five, and this is huge, protect your management interface. For goodness sake, don't just expose it to the raw internet. And finally, number six, have a rollback plan figured out before you even think about typing that update command and test it. So what's the final answer? Let's just boil it all down. If you've got a home lab, a weekly update schedule with a reboot whenever the kernel changes is pretty much perfect. For a small production setup, automate those security patches, do your feature updates maybe once a month, and always, always stage your reboots. And for the enterprise, well, that's a whole different universe. Rolling deployments, documented maintenance windows, and treating any major version jump like it's a full-blown project. And look, all of this advice, this entire plan, is really about dismantling the dangerous illusion of safety behind that if-it-ain't-broke mindset. Because let's be crystal clear, if you wait months to reboot, you are not stable. You are simply accumulating unknowns. You're building up this massive debt of deferred changes that will all come due at the absolute worst possible moment. Because when that system finally does reboot and inevitably breaks, you're not going to be debugging a single recent change. Oh no, you are now an archaeologist. You'll be digging through layers and layers of updates from months ago, trying to figure out which one of the dozens of changes is the one that finally took you down. You won't be debugging, you'll be excavating a fossil record of your own neglect. So here's the bottom line. Things will eventually break. That is a guarantee. Your job as a sysadmin is to make sure that when it breaks is a controlled, predictable experiment that happens during a maintenance window, not a catastrophic, career-altering failure at 3 in the morning. It's about moving from a lifestyle of fear and uncertainty to a rhythm of control and confidence. So the only question left is, how are you going to find yours?